With us now is Dr. Phil Harris, Executive Director of AECT. Sir, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, Richard. Please tell our audience what AECT actually is. The Association for Education, Communication and Technology is a professional organization that has representatives from around the world. We are a member-based organization of about 2,500, and what ties this group together is their common interest in improving teaching and learning through the use of technology. And the overriding uh, theme of everything that our members do is to increase learning of all level of learners, whether it's elementary students or college or university graduate students. Learning is our ultimate objective. So that is what ties us. You know, we may come at it from a variety of different positions. We have a strong distance learning group. We have a strong design and development group. We have a strong instructional design group. So these terms all fit specific individuals, but they represent different approaches to how individuals are going about improving the conditions for teaching and learning. So this is most interesting. I'd like to ask you, how do you see the trends in instructional technology coming up in the future? Well, there are a, a multitude of possibilities that can evolve over the next three to five years that will fundamentally change the way education is delivered. In the last decade, we have seen the, the real possibility of education being delivered anytime, any place, to anyone that has a handheld device. We are no longer confined to a building, to a room, and to the clock. Learning is now available around the world, around the clock, any subject, any time. And this is fundamentally changing the way we're perceiving what it means to provide educational opportunities. Historically, that, that image was of a brick and mortar building staffed by great people who dedicated their lives to working with children, motivating them, providing rich learning experiences. The technology is enabling us to redefine what learning experiences really means. And whether you're a four-year-old learning to explore the world with your iPad, or a 40-year-old learning to explore the depths of your area of interest with a similar iPad, it won't matter. We are going to be the seeing in the next decade so many changes from whether or not textbooks are going to be used or whether or not students will carry around their iPad or something similar that has access to literally the Library of Congress. Incredible. That's exactly right. This is an incredible period of time. It's as inspiring as it is all producing because no one can really predict what the future is going to look like in this context. We think that we have some ideas of what the future technologies might look like, but no one ever envisioned what we currently are carrying around in our pockets and in our cars and in our homes and how our our families are literally working closer together, even though it may be that they're working independently right next to one another. Some people view this as a disadvantage. And we even have some uh, private uh, schools who think that uh, introducing technology to four and five year olds is really not developmentally appropriate. I think this will pass as a concern that's probably not founded in anything but a cultural tradition. That we think that children need to have certain kinds of, 
of social interactions for appropriate psychosocial development. I, I don't believe that technology is going to produce a negative effect in future generations. I believe that the benefits of opening the world of learning to all children at any age is going to stimulate the brain in ways that, that previous generations never experienced. And we do know from recent brain research how important those early years really are in brain stimulation and in those networks. So I think this technology and the trends in this technology field are going to produce future citizens that are going to be better informed, going to be more productive, and are going to be enhancing the democratic process. All very fascinating. And of course, there are so many other facets to this. For example, in corporate America and in governmental and other, the need to enhance training is a great imperative. There are companies that spend so many resources in training individuals who will work with the company for a few years and then all these months of training will basically have been questionably uh, utilized. So how does instructional technology, how does technology in general enhance the possibility of the military and industry in training individuals more efficiently? Well, the military has been a leader in instructional design uh, dating back into the late 50s. And there is no question that the military is at the leading edge of all the learning technologies available today. They are doing things that won't be available to the general public for decades. But the training issue will be, I think, a secondary issue in the next decade. The, the training is going to be delivered on web-based platforms and the amount of actual corporate work time that has to be devoted to training will be diminished because these instructional training programs will improve the efficiency of the training process and corporations will find it easier and more efficient to train their employees to do what it is they are expected to do. There will be a shift to the employee in terms of the responsibility for learning is going to be on your shoulders. That we want you to do this job and we're going to provide you with the tools, but these are the things you're going to have to do. And it may not be possible to do it between the traditional work day. That's going to be redefined because the work day in North America is not necessarily the work day in Asia or Europe or South America. As our world is getting smaller, so to speak, we're going to have to adjust how we work, what we believe the work day is and the work schedule to the global economy. Before we conclude, I'd like to ask you a little more about AECT and how it is expanding your plans for the future. Well, AECT is investing in a number of initiatives to really add information, to add to the knowledge base in the field of instructional design. One of the things that we're doing is sponsoring an international student media festival. This media festival really puts great emphasis on student-produced media, and we're helping inform classroom teachers at the pre-K to through 12 level of how to really in include student-produced media in the teaching and learning process. We're also taking a leadership role in looking at the social networking policies and how social networking is likely to be impacting personal lives, learning lives, and work lives. And we think as, a, as an organization that had as its origin the emphasis on technology that is now shifting 
to an emphasis on learning, we're going to be contributing a lot to the knowledge base about the conditions needed for learning to occur. And that's what we believe to be an important part of our existence. I understand that companies like HP have supported a lot of educational projects and endeavors. Tell us a little bit about other corporate sponsors who assist in your work. Well, there are a lot of things that Apple is probably one of the biggest innovators because a lot of what Apple has done has really created the visual impact of the learning process. So we're seeing Apple research uh, pay off in great, uh, in great uh, detail. I suspect there are more PhD f folks working at Apple than you'll find at the majority of major research institutions. Microsoft is right in the same uh, category of organizations that are investing heavily in the future. And I think that there are other smaller companies than, than Apple and Microsoft, but th there is a huge amount of investment in trying to look to the future and rethinking how you deliver education and when you deliver it. This has been very, very interesting and very informative. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for the opportunity. Our pleasure. I'll be right back.